Bismillah walhamdulillah Bismillah walhamdulillah Wa salatu wa salamu wa rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi Wa man tabi'ahum bi isanin ila yawm al-dini Wa ba'd assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, this evening, insha'Allah, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions just to start off uh, this short reminder of five to ten minutes. Imagine the scenario, you come over to my house, uh, yeah, you're here in my house right now, you're sitting right here across from me, I say, uh, you want some water? Uh, I say to you, uh, uh, do you want water? or tea. I say maybe um, there's some food here. Do you want one slice of pizza or two slices? Um, along this line of questioning, maybe you can remember a time when you had a guest in your house, even if the guest was your neighbor, family member that doesn't live in the house, a friend that came over, they were there with you and you said something along those lines. Hey, you want something to drink? Uh, or maybe you were at someone's house and they said the same thing to you. Hey, do you want something to drink? Now, there are people that uh, they, they have no problem responding uh, to these questions and they will jump right in and say, yeah, I'll take a cup of water. Or they'll say, actually, no, I don't want water, I want a soda. Or, no, I don't want tea, I want coffee with two sugars and cream. And if you could put that uh, low uh, low-fat cream or um, make it a frappuccino. There may be some people that have no problem responding to a host uh, in such a way. But there are many people that will respond uh, just out of shyness uh, by turning away. They say, oh, I'm not thirsty, when in reality they could be thirsty. Or they could drink. Or, no, I don't want anything. I don't want to bother you. I don't want to be of any trouble. Uh, uh, there's a story that was told to me uh, some time ago, really early on in my Islam. Uh, there was a community that were hosting a guest speaker to their, uh, to their mosque, and someone volunteered to actually host the sheikh in their house. And so when the sheikh, he came from a long journey, it doesn't matter sheikh or not sheikh or whoever, the, the point is, is the manner in which you host someone. So anyway, he arrived from his travels and a long day on the road or plane or whatever it may be and he gets to the house and so the host you know has him come into the house and he says um sheikh i'm gonna make some food uh do you want one egg or two eggs kind of a thing and so the sheikh he says uh oh no i'm not hungry i'll just go straight to bed the reality was he was actually hungry he'd been on a long journey he hadn't eaten but out of shyness he didn't respond to that because he didn't want to put someone out or burden them. So here this may be something that um, we take uh, for granted, the way in which we host people, when in fact this is one of the, the shining qualities of the Muslim is how they host their guests. The Prophet وسلم, of course is well known, he says, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yukrim Whoever believes in Allah on the last day, then let them honor their guests. How do you honor your guest? Is it by uh, putting them on the spot? Maybe something simple like that in the way that you present? Or are you a five-star host? That's the question. Are you a five-star host? Or are you a three-star host? We know the difference when we look for accommodation. Most of us, we want to stay in five star. We want to stay in seven star if it's available in some parts of the world. Because of the service that you get and the joy that that brings you to feel, uh, to feel appreciated, to feel honored, if you will, as was mentioned in the hadith. So I want to uh, leave you with one major point um, in terms of how your guest services are. And we each need to take ourselves to account and, and to judge. Are we a three-star, a four-star, a five-star? Some of us may even be a one-star or lower, how we treat guests. But listen to this. <clears throat> you look in the Quran, and we know that there are uh, great benefits to be learned from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But about guests in particular, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, it is um, very powerful in regards to hosting guests. And sort of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ibrahim alayhi salam 
and his manner. <laughs> yeah, Nick, you can have a, a what's that? A Mako Frappuccino. Um, you can have three of those at my house if you want. And we'll put a little side of chocolate or some cake for you. <clears throat> no problem. Maybe we'll offer more to you than that after we listen to this story. So he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, هَلْ حَدِيثُ ضَيْفِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْمُكْرَمُونَ It says, has the story of Ibrahim's honored guests, has it come to have been informed of this story? They went to the house, says, إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ فَقَالُوا السَّلَامَ They went into his house and... <laughs> They said, Salam. Qala salamun qawmun munkarun. So he responded by saying, And peace be upon you, people who are unknown. So basically, these were the angels that were visiting him, alayhi salam, and these were in the form of men, and the Prophet Ibrahim, he had no idea who they were. He responded to their greeting, Salamun, he says, qawmun munkarun, people that are unknown to me. This is where it gets important here, right? So we have an introduction to the story, who's there. There's guests. Ibrahim is now the host of people he doesn't know. And so many of the scholars uh, from amongst them, Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, and others, they took the position that hosting a guest is an obligation. For someone that just shows up at your door as a guest, it's an obligation, it's a right of your Muslim or a right of your guest that you host him, right? So he says, فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ فَجَاءَ بِأَجْلٍ سَمِينٍ He says, he went directly to his family and he brought back a fat animal. Right? This is a, 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 an offering of what he's going to give. So he went, he went quickly to serve his guest. He did not wait. And you'll notice here, he... He brought the best of his wealth, right? He brought the best of what he had. He says, بِعِجْلٍ سَمِينٍ A healthy, fat, meaty animal. He didn't bring the, the, the runt of the litter. He didn't bring the, the smallest of the offering. He didn't bring the leftovers or, you know, the stuff they didn't want to eat, but he brought the best thing that they had. فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ And he put it in front of them. He put it in front of them فَقَالَ أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ Will you not eat? Look at the way that he invites them to eat. He doesn't ask them, would you like something to eat? And waits for their response to go get it. But he goes and gets it first. Prepares the best of his food. He does it himself. He doesn't ask someone else, hey, a son or daughter or someone else, go bring and serve the guests. No, as the host, he takes pride, he takes honor in serving his guests, and he does it in the best of way because the Muslim, the believer, wants to be a five-star host. They want to provide five-star service to their guests because it's a part of their faith. It's a part of their identity as people of faith is that they believe in Allah on the last day, so they're going to honor their guests. And these are from the qualities that, that will wear off on society. This is how we distinguish ourselves as people of faith by many things, but one of them in particular is by honoring the guests. So he says, فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ فَقَالَ أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ He brought it to them. He didn't ask them first. You want a cup of water? Are you thirsty? Can I get you something? But he brought it to them. Right? So next time you have a guest over, someone shows up at your door, and you invite them to come in, the best thing to do is have something ready. You know, um, uh, my upbringing as a Muslim was in Medina, by and large, uh, and, uh, and, and the, the, the customs and traditions there, uh, and many of the Muslim countries and Muslim families, they still have these practices. And as American Muslims, uh, we also need to refine even Muslims that have immigrated, uh, migrated to America, United States, we have to refine our our hosting service. Sometimes we get caught up in the, in, the, in, the, in the norms of what's going on there. And yeah, as Americans, we can, sometimes we can lack, we can slack off in that. So to have something ready for guests when they come over and to take pride in that, to let the family know that, look, when guests come over, we're going to give them what we can, the best that we have. We're going to show them that we appreciate their presence in our home and that we honor them. 
right? And so we're not going to wait and ask, do you want how many, how much? We're going to give, and we're going to give to the best of our abilities until they don't take any more, right? If they want a coffee, they want a, 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 a mocha frappuccino, uh, ma 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 mocha, I'm sorry, mocha frappuccino for my man Nick. Uh, anybody else here? We're going to try to give the best we can. If we don't have mocha, we're going to try to give uh, a chai. Uh, we're going to try to give something that, that we believe is, is, is the best that we have. And hopefully by doing that, we will, of course, uh, increase in our love for one another. Uh, we will first and foremost be pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll be strengthening our bonds in community. We'll be meeting new people, uh, getting closer to them. Everyone loves to be served every once in a while. If it's just for moments. Uh, and Islam is about service. Islam is about khidmah, about giving good service and about taking pride in what you do and having ihsan. And that's what I talked about uh, in our last meeting together. So think about that next time you have a guest over. And you may even want to find opportunities to have a guest over. That's a whole other story altogether, um, is, is actually making the opportunities it can be very difficult in the busy days that we have. But make the opportunities to invite guests over so that you can serve those guests and you can be a five-star host. I'll leave you with that. All the best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your attentive listening and your attendance. We hope to see some engagement uh, in the comments. Share a story with us. Add to the conversation of the benefit. Zakallah khair wa sallallahu wa sallam. على نبينا محمد وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين